Alright, so I've been out here for six months and uh, it's good to make a video every now and then just so I can remember where things were at. This is my driveway coming in. I made this with a shovel and a axe basically. Cleared out some bushes. I had picked an area that was smaller bushes going through but there was still a lot of hand digging and whatnot. So from the earlier videos, the bus used to be parked here. Uh, I realized this was a low spot and water was running through here pretty bad, so I moved. But on uh, some of the videos, you'll see there was a pile of rocks and gravel. That I didn't move. Actually, some of it I did move, but some, most of it's still here. So where I moved, the bus was all the way up to there, so it's maybe 100 yards away. Not a big move, but it still took me the whole weekend to move it because nothing is bolted down in the bus. And uh, it took some doing to get everything to settle down, move the bus, turn it around, get it to the new spot, and then put everything back together. So that pretty much killed the weekend. Uh, part of that, then I made the second half of the driveway. Typically, I back up here so that it's easier to get out. I didn't give myself another turnaround spot, so I turn around down here and I back in. And I planned the driveway so that most of the bigger bushes, I can drive around them. This is where I'm thinking of building. I've been looking at the idea of doing some dome, uh, geodesic domes. And rather than building one big one, I thought I would uh, make several smaller ones, one at a time, so I'd have one that I can sleep in and live in, and then as I went from there, I could build a second one and so on. The current design is going to have three main domes, and then possibly a bigger one in the middle, which would be kind of a living room. So I got circles marked out where different things are going. The design is changing every now and then, so here's more rocks. After seeing the flooding, I decided it might be a good idea to raise areas up, and so um, a lot of the digging has been just to make a good pile of dirt, and then when I start building I use that to raise the area that I'm building in so that I'm about a foot or so above ground level. This area I've never seen flood. It's just enough higher that the water, it's kind of a creek that doesn't have a creek bed but it runs through kind of here in the green area. Um, and then it flows into this kind of cleared area down here. So where the bus is, it's couple three feet higher than that. It seems to be enough. I've never seen water flow up here. This one I'm digging a hole. Two reasons. One I think I want to build a water tank in there. That would probably be next year. But by digging the hole here I had more dirt for over here. Which this circle is probably going to be the first dome that I built because it's closer to where the bus is. And that would be my bedroom or whatever. So there's a kind of a line scratched in the ground where that's going to be. Every time I dig, I find rocks, so I'm trying to push them off to the side. I should be able to use that for doing masonry or at least foundations under the concrete. Okay, my goal has always been that I wanted to build a workshop, and so this area I cleared for the workshop. And once I had that settled, then that's when I decided to move the bus up here so that I could put the bus in place before I built the workshop. And then, then if I never moved the bus, then that'll just be there for storage or something like that. So I got some uh, white poles in the ground where I'd kind of marked the corners where I thought I would put the shop. The bus is faced straight east so that the sunrise comes in through the windshield more or less. Things blow away so I use the old tires to hold them down. Pretty ghetto but that's what works out here. This is the bus seats. I'm saving those because there's 
a lot of useful metal there. Um, I've made some projects like the uh, shelves inside the bus, use these for brackets. Motorcycle looking kind of sad, hasn't been ridden for a couple of months now. A few reasons. The road is just horrendous right now. Which normally the motorcycle does better on a rough road, but what happened is they are grading loose dirt and gravel in to fill the holes, and you can't see it, especially in the dark. So if you run through a foot of deep gravel on the motorcycle, that really messes up your day. Currently, during the week, I sleep in the back of the truck. Um, that's working out pretty well. It's, it's saving me a bunch of gas money is the thing. is, It's 100 miles one way from here to work. So by sleeping in the truck, that frees up gas money and time that I can do other things with. Lately, I've been buying 2x4s, sometimes without a per specific purpose, and then I have a few, so when I get home on the weekend, if I think of something, I've got wood to do something with. Since I don't have a shop, I did build some workbenches so I can at least do things out here. And in the meantime, any tools that are getting used and are stored in the bus, and then at the end of the day, I just pick everything up and put it back in the bus. One of the things I want to use that corrugated for is to make a kind of a lean-to roof off the side of the bus, and then I can have semi-dry area under here and also shade. In November, the sun, sun feels really good. In July, it's pretty brutal out here, so shade would be a nice idea. Current idea for the shop, instead of doing one big shop, what I've been thinking is doing kind of lean two roofs off the side and then make a central shop that's much narrower uh, that dimensions and whatnot keep changing so I haven't nailed that down yet but I'd set myself up so that like this white post right here there it is that one that's one of the corners of where the shop was going to be and I think that's either eight or ten feet from there to where the bus is I'd marked it and then I parked the bus pretty carefully on a specific spot to work with that. So the idea would be that I could run a roof basically from the bus to the edge of the shop and have an open shaded area beside the shop and then put the shop in the middle and then another kind of a side wing off of the other side that could be either open or closed in. Most of the time, aside from the wind, it's nice working outside. So I'm thinking pole barn open sides with a good roof and then the lean-to roof coming off the bus to the barn and then the same on the other side and then I can close it in one wall at a time so I don't have to do it all at once. This was the first truck camper prototype. I think that uh, was in the truck for a week and then I took it out and built the other one. The original idea that was a frame that I was going to hold a tarp over but the wind was just too much, so. Um, let's see, these are the motorcycle ramps that I used for hauling the bike. And this is a step that is just perfect for coming out of the back of the bus. On this side, I built my outside shower. And at the moment, I'm just throwing a bunch of cardboard boxes there that I keep saving for some reason. And uh, eventually I'll throw them away because now they've been rained on. Um, I still am taking showers out here, however, most of my showers are in town because I've got a gym membership, so I don't really need this as much. I just, you know, I'm only out here for a couple days on the weekend, so I take a shower before I go back into work. Uh, the last couple of days that I was out here, I heated up water on the little stove and then took my shower with that, and it was pretty good. Uh, this here was my prototype for the solar water heater experiment. By the time I got around to using it, I don't get very much heat anymore. And uh, good idea, but I waited too long into the year. So I think I'm gonna repurpose that piece of wood for something else. 
Solar panels, this, this was the biggest thing for this year, I think. This is three kits of Harbor Freight's $150 per kit solar system. So it's actually four panels in a kit, so I got six panels here, six there, so it's four, four, four for three kits. Built the frames out of two by fours, obviously. And there's a conduit that runs under the ground between the two right there. And then there's another conduit under the ground that goes from here over to there, it comes up under the bus and then into this battery box under the tire because I still haven't got around to attaching the, the lid. But that works pretty good. Um, this, <laughs> for several months I kept the water jugs in the bus and I was they were always in the way. And I kept thinking, I'm going to build a box or something out here or a rack to keep them in the shade because if they're in the sun, the plastic just gets killed. And finally, just not too long ago, I got tired of them. But at the same time, I built the battery box, actually, because the batteries and the water jugs were always in the back of the bus, taking up a lot of valuable space inside. And I thought, well, there's always at least one water jug is full, so if I tied all of the jugs together, they won't blow away. So at the moment, there's a little bit of gas in one can for the generator. Two of the water jugs are full, and then the other two are empty. And I usually keep one of the gray ones and one of the blue ones in the bus still. So in the meantime, that's actually worked out as about as good as anything, because I would always find one of the gas cans blown either halfway across the yard or blown under the bus where you couldn't get to it. This way they're all at least in the same spot. This door here is the bus battery door. So I put the big battery box in the same proximity. So if I want to, I could use these batteries to jump start the bus. I could also probably start the bus and charge from this to the big battery bank. Haven't done that yet, but that's the idea it should work because I've got a 100 amp probably more than 100 amp alternator on the bus. That would be good for charging up the batteries if I just run out of power. So I've got four of the bigger deep cycle batteries from Walmart. They're about $100 a piece. I get a lot of runtime off of things like laptops with that. Uh, 1500 watt inverter. And then over here, that's the charge controller from Harbor Freight. I'm gonna swap that out because I've got a bigger one. I just haven't done it yet, and all the wires running. And that cord is what I run everything off of. Goes back to the bus. Ah, uh, keep a little bit of wood under the bus and other stuff. Where I'm at now, I don't get water flooding under here. Initially, when I was parked in the first spot, after a couple of good rains, I realized water was running under the bus and everything was getting wet. Less of a problem here. Uh, some tools. Those two white folding tables used to be inside. The new generator. Um, might have overbought on this, but I think it'll be good later. So this is a 9,000 watt Northern Tools generator. Uh, I can do 220 or 110. And it's got lots of plugins, and each set of plugins have their own breaker, which is nice. And you can run your RV off it or whatever. So I could run an air conditioner is one idea. I bought it because I wanted to be able to run a welder, a plasma cutter, and an air compressor. So I needed a little bit more power than what I had available. This is the old generator. It's a 4,000 watt, also from Northern Tools. And it started uh, burning a lot of oil and smoking, so it's basically on its way out. So that's why I bought the big one. The big one should last a lot longer for a couple of reasons. One, because I'm smarter now than I was. I really abused this one. Didn't uh, keep up on changing the oil like I was supposed to and checking the oil like you're supposed to. And It also just ran a lot. Um, I was running it several hours a day to run my deep freeze and to charge the batteries. And at the time, the batteries weren't very good. So it was taking a lot of 
you know, I put a lot of hours in it in the first six months that I won't need to do as much now because I've got the solar. So the new generator for close to three times the price should last me a few years just because I'm not going to run it three hours a day. And I was running this one every day. So it's less of an issue now. The new one came with a wheel kit, which is nice. That also gets it a little bit higher off the ground. I dug this hole a couple reasons. One, I just wanted to test. Sometimes it's just fun to dig a hole, but I was looking, okay, how easy is it in different spots to dig? And that was one of the most interesting things that I learned was 20 feet in either direction, I've got completely different soil. Since this is kind of a low point, it's mostly silt and really soft. It digs really easy. In fact, that hole is partially filled in since I dug it. A lot of this dirt is over by the domes now, where the domes are going to be. One of the things, though, I was looking at is I need water for when I start doing things like concrete. You know, there's two ways to catch water. If you have a roof, you can do eave troughs, and then you got nice, clean drinking water, rainwater that's you know not dirty, relatively. And then the other option is if you got a hole in the ground and it fills up, and then you can pump the water out of that. And this um, does catch quite a bit of water because it's in a kind of a creek, and so the water that comes running across the ground ends up in there, stays there for a day or two, and then eventually soaks in. So one of the ideas I had is I, if I dig this a little bit bigger, I could actually concrete line the hole, and then that wouldn't soak in, right? Then I'd have a couple hundred gallons of free water every time it rained. If you let it sit for a day or two, let the sediment fall out of it, and then pump it off, you know, put your pump six feet or six inches off the bottom kind of thing, then you got relatively clean water. That would be fine for making concrete. You wouldn't want to drink it. Might be okay for a shower though. You know, run it through a water filter once or something like that, a little bit of bleach, and you're good to go. Free water. I have a water account in town. Cost me a little less, that's about forty forty two dollars a month. And that gives me well, it's half of that is for the dump. So, you know, I can take my take my own trash to the dump. Um and the other half gives me the first 2,500 gallons of water. Okay. I have never used more than, I don't know if I've ever gotten over 100 gallons a month yet. They don't actually put that on the bill. If you didn't go over the first thousand, they just write down a thousand. But your first increment is at 2,500, I think. Something like that. So, you know, I'm not using the amount of water that I'm paying for, but I also have to go into town and haul it. It's 15, about 15 miles to town. And I would need a tank. It's a bumpy road. And uh, that's a lot of wear and tear on your truck. So if I could get free water out here, rain water, for using everything else except for drinking. I don't mind hauling drinking water. The amount of jugs I have, especially now that I'm not living out here full time because I spend most of the week in town for work, I, I don't need very much water. So if I hauled water once a month, that's about right. I can take three or four jugs, fill them up. I use maybe one jug every weekend. It's kind of about right.